Hi, welcome to Ingvid. I'm Adam. In today's video, we're going to look at measurements and we're going to look at measurements in everyday uses. So these are measurements that you will hear and have to say pretty regularly when we're talking about people or food or drinks or places, distances, etc. So we're going to start with people. And basically, when we talk about measurements, we're going to talk about a person's height and a person's weight. Okay, so let's talk about height. So I'm going to use the measure six foot two. So for example, I am six feet, two inches tall. So if somebody asks me, how tall are you? More, most commonly, I will say I'm six two. Six two. Everybody understands six is feet. And this is the symbol for feet. Two is inches. And that's the symbol for inches. Okay, one apostrophe or quote, double quote. So how tall are you? I'm six two. But if I want to expand, I can say I'm six foot two. I can put the actual unit of measure. We're talking about feet. One foot is 12 inches or about 30 and 0.4 something uh, centimeters. Okay. So I'm six foot two. And if you want to know, if you're not sure how to pronounce uh, inches, 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 that's how it's pronounced. It doesn't, not necessarily the way it looks. Okay. Now, this is where English becomes a little bit crazy. Now, technically, you want to make it plural because there's six of them, right? So you're thinking, why do I say foot? I don't know. That's just the way we say it. I'm six foot two. But if I'm going to use the word tall, if I'm going to use the full expression, then I'm going to use the correct expression. I'm six feet, two inches tall. So how tall are you? I'm six two. How tall are you? I'm six foot two. How tall are you? I'm six feet, two inches tall. Okay. It depends how you're saying, how you say it depends which word you're going to say. Foot twice, feet once with the tall. Okay. Now, sometimes you might hear, it's a little bit rude. It's not very nice to say, but for a short person, how tall is that guy? Uh, he's five foot nothing. Five foot nothing, nothing basically means zero. So five feet, period. If somebody is six feet tall, six feet tall. How tall are you? Six. But again, you wouldn't say six, you say six feet. If there's no inches, then you just say six feet, six feet tall. It doesn't matter foot, feet, whatever. With no inches, that's how it is. If somebody's really short, five foot nothing means the nothing basically means short. Okay. Or just say five feet. Okay. A meter 88. So for those of you who don't know imperial measure. So again, in Canada, we are we are influenced by both American English and British English. So Canadian English is a bit of a blend. So if somebody asks me how tall I am, I'll answer in the American way. If they ask me the distance, I'll answer in metric, in kilometers, not miles. Okay. But so feet and inches. But if you need to know the metric, I'm a meter 88. Now you can spell meter this way or this way. This is more the British spelling. This is the American spelling. The pronunciation is meter. Or if you have S, five meters, okay, meters. So I'm a meter 88 or 188 centimeters. Okay, so that's for height, feet and inches, meters and centimeters. Okay, if you want to talk about somebody's weight, again, in Canada, most people will tell you their weight in pounds, but in other countries, they'll tell you their weight in uh, kilograms. So. First thing to know. So how, how much do you weigh? I'm 195 pounds. Now I have heard people say libs or libs. We do not say this word. The actual word is Libra, but we don't actually use this word ever to talk about weight or any sort of measurement. We say pounds. Okay. It actually, the original Latin was Libra, Libra Pondo or something like that. And that's where the pounds comes from. So 195 pounds, pow, ns, pow, ns, pounds. Okay. That's the pronunciation. And if you want to convert it to metric, I'm um, 88 kilograms. Okay. Now there are two ways to say this as well. Some people will say kilos. Okay. And some people will say the full word kilograms. The pronunciation is a little bit different. If you're saying kilos, then it's ki lows. And if you're saying kilograms, then it's ki lo, actually, we don't actually have the W, ki lo grams, kilograms, kilos, 
kilograms. Okay. And uh, British people sometimes still use stone. One stone is 14 pounds, in case you ever hear a stone. I think only in England they use this as far as I know. In Canada, if you tell somebody your weight in stone, they have no idea what you're talking about. So keep that in mind. So we're talking about people. Now let's move on to a completely different area. Food and beverage. Food and beverages. Food you eat, beverage you drink. Okay. Now here we have all kinds of things we can work with. We can work with ounces. So OZ, that's the unit of measure shortened. It's ounce, that's what it looks like open. Pronounced ow, ounce. Okay. One ounce equals 28 grams. So we can use ounces for small units of weight measure. We can also use ounces for volume measure, for liquids. One ounce is 29 and a half milliliters. Milliliters. Some people will say mil or mils, 29 mils. That's again, that's a shortcut. If you hear it, you understand it's milliliters. We don't say kigs, however. We say mils, we don't say kigs. Okay. Uh, and we also say cubic centimeters. Again, not in Canada. I've heard it more used in Europe when they talk about uh, liquid measures. Cubic centimeters. Cubic centimeter. And uh, one ounce is also 29.5 cubic centimeters or 29.5 mil. Okay. Now, then we get to pounds. And again, we're talking about small amounts. If you're talking about larger amounts, you just give the large amount or the kilograms. Here you're going to give one pound is 16 ounces. So again, when you're reading a recipe, for example, <clears throat> excuse me, and they say use a 16 ounce can of crushed tomatoes. A 16 ounce can is a one pound can or 454 grams if you want to use the metric measure for this. Now, if you go to a pub and you want to order a beer, you will order a pint, let's say, or a half pint. Now, here's where it gets a little bit confusing. British and Canadian pints are 20 ounces or 568 milliliters. Uh, and if you want to, if you go to the States and you order a pint, you're going to get a 16 ounce beer. And that's 473 milliliters. So it's important to understand the different things. Now, not a, not a big deal. If you go to the States and you order a pint and it's smaller than you're used to, whatever, you just order another pint. But if you go to the States, if you're used to American pints and you go to Canada or you go to the UK and you get a, a pint, it's bigger. So make sure you don't get drunk. That's the key. Okay. And if you're following recipes, if it's metric, just convert. Okay. It's very easy to go online and find conversion charts. So don't worry if you find a good recipe for a dish you really like and all the measurements are in American measurements or like imperial measurements, or if they're in uh, metric. Just go online, find yourself a conversion chart and make the changes necessary so you can follow the recipe. Okay, let's look at some other uh, points where we use measurements. Okay, so now we're going to look at different measures. We're going to look at distances, lengths and some sizes. And we're going to look at talking about gas and talking about temperatures. So let's start with distance. First of all, in the States, if you drive down to the States, your speedometer on your car will be a little bit confusing. If you rented a car in Canada, for example, and you drove down to the States, keep in mind they use miles. In Canada, we use kilometers. One mile is 1.6 kilometers. So a hundred, uh, I don't remember the exact thing, but if you go on a highway and your speed limit is a hundred kilometers per hour in the States, that's about, uh, 60 or 65, something like that. I don't really remember, but anyway, kilometers, k la me -ters. Notice that the, it's not meters. Okay. And it's not like, uh, like kilograms is about the same kilo, kilo, kilometers, kilograms. So the law is a little bit different and the meters is not meters. It's meters, kilometers, meters. Okay. One mile, 1.6 kilometers. Now, again, Americans use yards. One yard is 0.914 meters. Now, another thing to notice, kilometers has an S, meters doesn't. Why? I really don't know, but that's the way it is. Meters, we don't put the S. Kilometers, we do. Kilograms, we do. Centimeters, we don't. Okay. 
so point nine now. Another thing to notice, I say point nine one four. Okay, you can say zero point nine one four if you want, but this is pronounced point, not decimal, not period, nothing else like that. Now again, we talked about height, so they're using feet and inches. So one foot is thirty point four eight centimeters. One inch is 2.54 centimeters if you want to be precise. Generally speaking, we don't get too deep into these numbers. What we do is we round things off, but I'll talk about that in a minute. We go to the nearest whole number. So we just cut this out and just say 30. Technically 2.54, so we just cut this out and say 2.5. We'll go to the nearest uh, thousandth. You can say 0.5 if you want as well, 30 and a half centimeters. Uh, so inches. Now, the thing about measures, when we talk about size, okay, a lot of people like to use analogies. An analogy is basically a comparison to something else, something more familiar. So especially in America or Canada, we use uh, sports uh, things, sports facilities. You'll quite often hear Americans describe something as very big or very long by how many football fields it is. So let's say that somebody wants to talk about um, the new aircraft carrier the Navy has just built. It's huge. It's very big. It's three football fields. It's the length of three football fields. Okay. And we would say like this, the length of three football fields. Each football field is 120 yards, if you want to get the idea. A lot of people, if you want to use metric, use Olympic pool. So the, the city or the new town or the farm, the, the person's farm is the length of uh, five Olympic pools. One Olympic pool is 50 meters. It is 250 meters long, okay? In Canada, you'll sometimes hear people, because we love hockey in Canada, you'll sometimes hear people compare it to a hockey rink. A hockey rink is 200 feet long, okay? That's what they play on. Now, Sometimes people will talk about things in terms of a marathon, okay? If you're talking about uh, how far it is, oh, it's a marathon, you can't walk it, it's too far. A marathon is 42 kilometers or 26 miles. A lot of people do half marathons, so they do uh, whatever, 21 and 13, right? So we, again, we use analogies because we can picture a football field. If you tell me something is 500 yards long, I can't really imagine 500 y yards. If you tell me it's more than four football fields, oh, okay, wow, that's very long. I can imagine that. You'll also often hear the quarter mile, especially in racing. If you saw movies like Fast and Furious, they always have a race or a quarter mile. In horse racing, they race a quarter mile. So a quarter mile is 402 meters. But these are expressions you'll hear often. Now, again, if you don't go to the States, you think I don't need to know these expressions. But if you watch Hollywood movies, and they're using American English, they're going to use a lot of these expressions, a lot of these measures. If you don't have the subtitles, it's a good idea to have an, a, at least a close idea of what the conversion is. Okay? Now, where it gets very confusing is when you're using tools. It depends what kind of tools you're using. You can use imperial, which is basically American, or technically imperial measures are British, but we now think about them as American, or metric. So if you're, going, if you're going to fix a car, and the car was built with uh, metric specs, we call these specs, short for specifications, okay? So the builder used metric specs, so all the tools are going to be metric. So if you need like a wrench with a socket, and you need a 10 millimeter socket, and all you have is imperial tools, are there, and it's like uh, 3 sixteenths of an inch, it might not fit exactly. So you might be a little bit, uh, it might be a bit difficult for you to use the different tools. Most mechanics who fix cars have two sets of tools, an imperial set and a metric set. That way they can work on any car that they need to, okay? Speaking of cars, if you go fill up gas, again, in Canada, we use liters and we have a price per liter. I think today, the price per liter is a dollar ten and ten cents per liter. If you go down to the states, you're paying for gas by the gallon. Now, a gallon is again—it's a measure that has different numbers in the UK and different numbers in the states. 
In the States, one gallon is 3.8 liters. I rounded it up a little bit. Or in the UK, it's four and a half liters. So rounded off, we say is rounded off, or to round off is the verb. So for example, the 3.8, it's actually 3.786 or something like that. But I'm thinking too many numbers. I don't want to deal with all these numbers. So what I want to do is I want to round off to the nearest tenth. Okay, the first point. So tenth, hundred, thousandth, very difficult to pronounce. So I, I make this into an eight. Okay, because at uh, eight, I go up one. If it was under five, I would go down to the next number. But then I'm thinking 3.8. Why deal with all these numbers? Why make it difficult for, difficult for myself? I'll just round it out to four. So round off to four liters. So if I'm measuring, so US gallon, if I want to compare it to Canadian. So one gallon is four liters. That's how much I'm thinking how much it will cost me in Canadian. And then I understand that, you know, American gas is cheaper than Canadian gas because it's you paying per gallon. So then let's talk about temperature. So that was gas. Let's talk about temperature. And we have Fahrenheit and Celsius. Now, it's very confusing to try to understand how the conversion works, but the main numbers you need to know. 32 degrees Fahrenheit, again, this is used in the US, is zero degrees Celsius. Celsius is used pretty much everywhere else. 32 and zero, that's the freezing point, okay? So that's freezing. And then you need to know 212 degrees Fahrenheit equals 100 degrees Celsius. That's the boiling point. The only time they are the same is minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit and minus 40 degrees Celsius. That's when they're even. Now, there are, there are formulas. You can try to figure out how to convert, but don't. You have, a, you have a phone, you have Google on your phone, get a conversion chart and just ask Google to do it for you because the math is too complicated for Fahrenheit and Celsius, okay? But if you really want to know the difference between American and British measurements, Jill, my uh, co-teacher here at Ingvid, has done a very good video comparing the two countries' uh, measurements. You should go watch that. Also, if you want to make sure you understand all of these uh, units of measurement and all the ways to use them, go to ingvid.com. There's a quiz there that you can take to test your understanding of this. If you have any questions, please ask in the comment section at Ingvid. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, give me a like and subscribe to my YouTube channel and come back again for more uh, helpful lessons to help you with your English. See you again very soon. Bye.